So by now, we know how to find the vertex when given the vertex form of a quadratic equation, and also know how to complete the squares from the standard form to get to the vertex form. However, there is another rather simple way to get the vertex, which is from the use of partial factoring. So in this lesson, we'll go through how partial factoring works, and at the end we'll uncover a cool trick that's derived from this method used to find the vertex easily when an equation is in the standard form. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So here's a rough sketch of a parabola. Notice how if we take a look at this particular y value, we'd see that it hits two points on this parabola. Now if we add the two x values for these points together, and then divide it by two, we'd have the vertex's x value, wouldn't we? What I want you to notice is one step further. Notice how we could have looked at a different y value, and again we'd be looking at two different points on the graph that satisfy this y value. These two values have two x values, where if you add them and divide them by two, you'd get the same x value of the vertex as you did with the previous two points. So in light of this idea, let me show you how to perform partial factoring with the help of an example. So here is the given equation. Notice first of all that a is equal to 2, b is equal to 4, and c is equal to minus 7. Moving on, let's start by only being interested in the situation where our y is equal to c. We could really choose any value to replace y with, but making y equal to our c makes it possible for us to begin the process of partial factoring. So now that we've got this, let's add both sides by 7 to get the following. First let's rearrange this, and if we factor out the 2x from both these terms, we'd get 2x multiplied by x plus 2 equals 0. Now we want to find the x values of this equation that produces a 0, or shall I say the roots of this equation, which we can say are when x equals 0 or when x equals minus 2. So remember, we started by making our y equal to minus 7, which was our c value, and we got these two x values. So then we know for a fact that 0 minus 7 and minus 2 minus 7 are legitimate values within our graph. What we're interested in, however, is the vertex. How would we find it from here on? Well, since these two points we found were on the same y value, all we have to do is add the two x values and divide it by 2 to get the vertex's x value. So, we've got 0 plus negative 2 divided by 2, which is equal to negative 2 over 2, which equals negative 1. Now that we know for sure that our vertex has an x value of negative 1, we plug it into our original quadratic equation to get the following. If we simplify this, we get y equals 2 minus 4 minus 7, which simplifies to y equals minus 9. Therefore, this means that our vertex lies at minus 1 minus 9. Awesome! So let's look at what we did in general, and by the end of this we'll find out something really cool together. When we're given the standard form, if we let y equal to c, then what we end up with is the following. Subtracting c from both sides gives us this. Let's just swap these around. And now from here on, we can perform partial factoring since we've effectively found a way to factor just this area by deciding to take a look at only the places in the graph where y was equal to c. So now we know that we can factor out ax to get ax multiplied by x plus b over a. The factors will always be x equals 0 or x equals minus b over a. Now if we want to find the vertex's x value, all we have to do again is average out the sum of these two by doing 0 plus minus b over a, all divided by 2, and we'd get minus b over 2a. Aha! So what we figured out from doing the general example is this. When we have an equation in the standard form, we can get the vertex's x value by simply computing minus b divided by 2a. And if we wanted the full vertex, then all we need to do is substitute minus b over 2a as x, and we'd get the vertex's y value. Pretty cool, right? Well, that's it for this lesson. Make sure to practice some more questions to get a better hang of this concept, 
and we hope to see you in the next one.